Welcome to Daily 5 for Monday, September 18th, 2023. If you've listened for a while, you know that I tend to have this this back and forth with movies that I watch and review. They either end up being things like, say, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie where it just came out and I want to see it immediately, or it's older style stuff that's typically in the 80s, maybe early 90s. It tends to be slasher films, you know, horror films, that type of thing. But... If you've listened for a while, you also know that I have a soft spot for the older kind of hammer style horror films. And I don't watch those quite as often as I do some of the other stuff, but it seems like every time I do, I'm usually rewarded with a really good movie. And that's the case with my review for today, which is 1972's The Asphyx, which is a terrible title because it sounds like either a joke title or a porn title, but it's spelled A-S-P-H-Y-X. And it's a, it's one of these movies that they just don't make anymore. Uh, in that fact, even though it's from 1972, it feels older. It feels like more of a classic horror film, almost like a original Frankenstein type of movie with a very, very simple, compelling premise that is then delivered into the hands of actors who do such great work with the material that it doesn't matter that it's mostly one location. It's only a handful of people throughout the whole movie, and most of it, you know where it's going to go. There are no Shyamalan-style twists. There aren't any big over-the-top gore scenes like you get later in the 70s and 80s. That's what I mean about it. It doesn't even feel like a 70s movie. It is simply a great idea and sort of a classic idea. This is really a riff on Dr. Frankenstein's mistakes in trying to play God. Instead, in this movie, it's Dr. Cunningham who is a well-respected, intelligent, and very, very obsessive individual who comes upon the idea that he has figured out how to photograph a spirit or some kind of manifestation that occurs right at the moment of death. Not after death, but at the moment of dying, or right before. Essentially, a apparition that appears when a person is afraid of death. And once he figures out that that is what he is photographing, he then thinks that there is a way to capture this spirit, imprison it, and therefore grant immortality to whoever's asphyx he manages to capture and contain. That's the bare bones of the movie. That's it. I mean, when I say bare bones, that's the movie. It is a movie about somebody who is... At the beginning, seems like he's a very, well, he is. He's a well-loved individual with a family and people around him. And he starts to fall into the obsession of this idea and what this spirit could possibly do. And much like Dr. Frankenstein, that compulsion, that obsession leads to the downfall of everything around him, including himself to some degree. Now, that's kind of a spoiler, but it doesn't give everything away. I'm going to talk about it on Friday because I got to tell you, this movie right now is $2 to rent on Amazon. And it is worth far more than that. This is a magnificent older style horror film. Just, again, ones you don't see them making anymore. Now everything is, oh, shocking jump twists, or it has to be setting up a sequel, or there's got to be 18 different twists that happen at the end that make you not know any... Throw out everything you think you knew for the rest of the... That, this is not that. This is straightforward. Here's the story, and here's what we're going to tell you happens during that story. Much of it you will be able to map out. You will know where it's going. For the most part, there is one little interesting twist that comes at the end. But it's not... When I say twist, it's something where you think one thing is going to happen and something else does. But it's not like it reframes the whole movie. It's actually a really beautiful character moment. But it's very small. It's just surprising because... It seems like one little thing is going to happen and something else does. But again, it's not something where suddenly the whole movie is thrown topsy-turvy. It's just a little beautiful moment. And I just love the movie. There's really barely any gore. In fact, is there even any blood? There's a little bit, tiny bit. But it's more about the fact that you get to know these characters. And in particular, Dr. Cunningham, who starts off as this really wonderful individual. And really, his reasons for what he does are inherently good, but as with most things, good intentions can lead to, well, that's what the rest of the movie is. So I, I cannot stress enough how wonderful this movie was. And and for, like I said, a movie I, I'd never even heard of, but I, I remember seeing it. Didn't think the poster was all that great. Thought the poster looked like it was going to be a cheap, you know, knockoff effects movie, but kind of put it in the back of my mind. And then I happened to read about it in an article about gothic horror. And I went, oh, yeah, I never did watch that movie. Found it on Amazon for cheap. Decided, okay, this is 90 or so minutes I can spend. And I am so sorry I waited. What a wonderful film. Again, 1972, The Asphyx, $2 on Amazon. Go watch it. It's great. Later.